how this uh, workshop is coming, so I first come here to listen to the Naomi's uh, talk. And uh, only three of uh, Professor Leo, Naomi, and Wilson mentioned about transboundary. So I would like to uh, go into some of the issue about the needs of transboundary. I think there's, to me, there's two from this workshop today. One is how to build a transboundary between educations in different districts. Um, as I now mentioned, that is the social science and need to work all have to work with with the, uh, the uh, physical and the natural scientists. I think from my experience before with my colleague in uh, San Diego um, on the Marine Biodiversity Conservation Institute, they have a very nice program, which is the PhD student have to take a course from the physics, social science, or and also the new scientists. So they are not expecting the student to uh, build up a career only for science. Indeed, a lot of students that have been working with them end up becoming lawyers. But they have a very strong background of science. And also, some actually decided to finish PhD and go on to become a politician. So that means smart politician. Okay. So that's, that's right, they're educated. Okay. Most of the politicians are dumb. <laughs> and they are actually uh, inherited as well. Um, so that's why I'm saying that's one of the important issues, how to give the young people in this room about the futures. Um, to me, I'm working as the uh, marine uh, conservationist and ecologist for 20 years. I see there's not very bright futures in terms of ocean uh, interpretations. And, uh, but we still need to give young people the hope. But the only way is to get them to be transboundary. Okay? So I think this kitchen should help, and particularly for the professor that mentioned that in the city camp, we do have a program to build up this kind of transplantary uh, education, but we just started, and it's still difficult to break through the, the boundary. So the other, bound, the other trans, transplantary issues I want to mention is to echo uh, Professor Tan's each about, about we are not living in, in cross the, 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 uh, another uh, iron gate uh, to prevent the people transfer between the nation. In Asians, okay, we have a lot of issues, as the Professor Tan had mentioned. But the difficulty, the, the reality of the situation is, I really doubt Taiwan can play any role in terms of uh, uh, the, the status of Taiwan in the region here. Uh, I've been spending my career uh, to work with the people in the Asian region here, and we, we try to build up the networks to resolve the overfishing issues uh, in the South China Sea. But the end up is Taiwan will always be out of the gate, okay? We won't be able to get any dialogue between the nation. I think Professor Tan must have a lot of experience that we try to impose, okay, the data, but the strongest science is in Taiwan. So the question, the question is, even we try our best to provide the cited evidence to a region country here, we cannot cross the boundaries such as ACM plus two, ACM plus three, plus five. So I think that's a reality we have to face like how we can build up based on our own experience and the, our social and the political situation um, to build up a model, okay? And, uh, and, 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 and they let the, the world to see us. That's something I, I can only comment. Otherwise, it's always all it's the 10 or 20 um, um, you know, upset story about how to work with people in Thailand and Philippines and get the data and write a scientific paper. And, but that's my experience. So I think the transboundary have to be real uh, in this situation, political issue, and they have to be resolved. Otherwise, even Professor Zhang have such a nice data and uh, about the, the Asian dust. And, but the impacts, for example, the impact of the, this dust on the ocean. Okay? In Caribbean, we know a lot. It caused the big problem with the radiation of coral reef in Caribbean. But how about in Asia? It is just that, but it's difficult. Okay. But I think Taiwan needs to play a role, definitely. But how to play a role? I think this workshop, this kind of a sustainable or environmental study, should be one of the, the start for all, most of the people in the room to think. So that's kind of coming from me. Thank you. Thank you. We're in the back. Yeah. Oh. Do, uh, yeah. I guess one to comment on education. Uh, in the past three years, I have been uh, teaching with the University of Tokyo, Seoul National University, and next semesters, we will, uh, I'm going to teach with uh, 
Osaka University, we have a course called Sustainability, Health and Environment. She <laughs> so uh, through this teaching, because we are very strong in internet, so we are organizing all these uh, technical part. And we have students and uh, professors in three countries. And uh, they work on projects together. So our main theme is that, uh, for sustainability, health, and environment. And the purpose is to make them become friends before they become enemies. So, <laughs> so next generation's education is very important. This we can pray, you know. We so uh, right now, uh, still, uh, university from Malaysia and uh, Thailand. You know, our time zone is only two hours uh, from uh, north to south. So that would be workable. But it, it's not working for US. It's too, too, too difficult to arrange that way. So education, we can do something. Under this political situation, still we can do something. I would strongly encourage this uh, university system to do more of this. If I could just add two things. Um, I Thank you for the kind words about San Diego. I've been involved with the, that program, actually, as an affiliated faculty member. And I think that program really shows the power of leadership. Because, as you know, Jeremy Jackson and Nancy Knowlton played a huge role in making that happen. That program would not ever have happened. Yeah, my friend. Yeah, I figure they must be. I mean, those two people working together made that program happen. And they made it happen over the resistance of a lot of faculty. So, but it's now a very successful program, as you said, and it's achieving its goals. So I think that's a really nice example for anyone here who might want to think about something. You know, how, first of all, individuals really can make a difference when they're in positions of leadership and when they have a clear vision of what it is they're trying to achieve. And the Marine Conservation and Biodiversity was a great place to do that because Jeremy and Nancy saw the way in which marine conservation couldn't be solved with science alone, that it was both a political, scientific, and cultural problem. So I think it's a nice model for climate change. And on the transboundary issues, so I'm not a political scientist, and it would be worth talking more with political scientists, but the acid rain issue, I think, is an instructive one. And this is one where... You know, if there are any historians in the audience, I've been trying to encourage my colleagues in history to be more willing to engage in um, something that we don't do enough of, I think, which is, you know, what I guess I could use, kind of call useful history, <laughs> you know, if I might, that um, I mean, historians often are a little reluctant to try to draw lessons from history because we're very sensitive to the fact that every historical situation is distinct. But if there's something in recent history that could be a model for us, then I think we should, this is a case where history could really be useful and helpful. So um, there's a woman, Milena Vacek, who was at the Max Planck Institute, who's now in East Anglia, who's looking at the history of the transboundary conventions on air pollution in Europe to try to understand how were they able to achieve agreement. Because initially, when that first happened, there was a lot of finger pointing, the Scandinavians blaming the Brits. And the Brits saying, no, you're wrong, we didn't do this, you know. And everybody always wants to blame us. And then the Scandinavians <laughs> saying, it's generally your fault. You know? so, um, but they did achieve successful reductions in acid uh, rain through uh, an international convention. So that's a nice model, and there are other models like that that I think could be studied uh, to help us think about you know, what makes something like that possible and successful. And if we have past models that have worked, then that helps us feel optimistic you know, that there could be future models that work too. Okay, thank you. Well, I think we have last comments. 